further to this inverter build, I managed to get the <coughs> that um, horrible messy breadboard, breadboarded circuit of the control board, I managed to get that onto a PCB. I've also built a output module because uh, it got to the point where I actually need to load this thing up now just to check that it's all working correctly. Uh, I've set it on four of these IG BJT thingies that uh, I had a had some here that I ordered for another job. I, I think it was for a, a, a repair of an inverter welder. These things are pretty meaty. They're, uh, I think they're 600 volts at about 40, 50 amps each. So we've got a capability there of a couple of hundred amps a side. But uh, they'll never be called on to do that, of course. So they'll be loafing along pretty much. Also um, got together a transformer. I just pirated a the biggest toroidal transformer I could find and rewound the primary to suit the turns ratio. Um, ideally it would be three times the size of that but for loads up to about 500 watts at the moment um, it'll do for testing purposes. I've had the idea actually of um, toroids are, are, are very efficient transformers I wondered if I could use the stators, remove the windings from a couple of alternator stators, tie the two together, and use those as a toroid core. I'm going to give that a try. Um, a car, a 12 volt car alternator, I think peaks out at about 70 amps. So that's probably about where the core would saturate. So if I strap two, two cores together, this should give me a, a capability of you know, in excess of 120-130 amps which should be fine, plus the short overload um, I haven't seen that done before, so it might be interesting just to do a wee experiment with that however, uh, this this one works, it's, it's way too much inductance on the primer to get any more than probably about 300 watts out of this thing I have it hooked up to a 100 watt light bulb just as a load. Um, yeah, and I, was, I haven't got the feedback circuit in yet. I've actually driven these. I'm, I'm still waiting for um, a couple of high speed diodes, catch diodes, commutation diodes, flywheel diodes, call them what you like. Um, these ones work, but they're a bit slow. I've got a bit of cross -talk, cross talk between the two halves of the sine wave at the moment, which is a bit of a bugger. Um, I drove these things with a couple of um, power transistors, a PNP and NPN, just wired up as a Class B stage. So it's active pull up of the gates and an active pull down. And uh, yeah, I haven't designed with IGBJTs before. These are fairly new to me, but as I understand it, they have just as much, just as a lower turn on as a MOSFET, a true MOSFET. Um, but these being a bipolar, they have a voltage drop between collector and emitter. I think it'd be as much as one volt, but oddly enough, by what I've read, the um, actual turn on, um, fully turned on resistance is milliohms, just like a MOSFET. Um, but I understand they're a hell of a lot more rugged than a MOSFET, which is really what I'm after. So I thought, well, I'll give these little buggers a try and see, see what they do. Um, so I've still got the manual V-Sense control, but I'll fire this thing up and show you what I've got here. So by turning this pot, we can bring up, quite neatly bring up the load. It's probably a bit bright for the, for the camera. I'll put a piece of paper over there. You don't get deafened by photons, and as you can see, you know we can bring it right up the brightness, right up until the actual point where it thinks it's overloaded, so it'll just suddenly drop off. I'm running this off a, a motorbike battery. My poor power supply just cannot supply the currents we're dealing with here. I'm not normally called upon 
to, to, to build this industrial strength current type stuff. But um, I'm really after reliability with this and those, those IGBJTs, let's just call them output devices, I think will do the job. But basically I want reliability and I, I want a good, um, good voltage supply. Because all my test gear here, um, yeah, I, I actually need it. It's mainly linear power supplies and all this stuff. So yeah, a good supply of voltage will stop transients and heating and stuff like that. None of it draws a lot of current. Uh, probably the greediest thing is my spectrum analyzer. I think it's about 110 watts or something. The rest of it, like my signal generator down there, this only about 60 watts scope, so I'm not too sure what that one is. But other than that, no, I, I just need um, good, clean, reliable power. And if there's any left over, I could probably run the workshop lights with this as well. Because basically it all just comes on together. But um, that um, v Central actually has got 100% range from absolute zero, which is there, to all the way up to... 100% well what effectively is 100% duty cycle so yeah it should be able to hold its voltage pretty pretty well so that, that's what I'm up to so far but until I get some some fast recovery diodes for the to go from collector to, to ground this thing ain't not going to work just properly yet but the the IGB's G Oh, out, output devices remain dead cold, um, even running at, at, at 100 watts, which I've got at the moment. But that, that's only what, about 10 amps. So, um, yeah, if they were going to get hot, I think they would need a hell of a lot more going through them than that. However, I'll leave this at this point. I'll, for those few of you that are interested in making a sine wave inverters, this is actually what we're up to at the moment. So, um, next job is to get this um, this servo feedback voltage control thing up and working. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a compromise. It needs to be fast enough to stop transients and regulate voltage almost on a cycle by cycle basis. But it also needs to be slow enough to keep these the output device is out of conduction or just spiking when there's no load on the inverter the narrower we can get that spike and the longer the time constant we get for this V-sense the less input current or standby current this thing's going to draw the control board at the moment is drawing just over 22 milliamps um, a couple of small design changes will probably cut that back by about 5 We'll see how we go. Um, this is just a prototype, so no doubt there'll be other things that I'll change during this design process, but it's best probably to thought it better just to tidy it up a little bit so I can work with it easier. And there's always the chance of electrocuting yourself as well. So the less sort of wires you've got tangling around the place, the safer it is to work on. Okay.